You need a man of God for the cause of three things. It can be more, but this one is the most fundamental, almost basic. The first reason as to why you need a man of God, you need to belong to a specific church and under a specific pastor. You know, you can, some people say, I am born again, I can just stay at home and worship him from here. I know of people who said I am born again I don't need a pastor I will just sit in the church and watch TV it is enough if I, if I get preaching to TV and there are people who think like that why do you need a man of God number one you need a man of God because somebody has to link you to God. Hmm? God has to, con somebody has to connect you to God. Somebody that God has called has to connect you to God and then help you live the way God expects you to live. It's not enough just to say there is God in heaven. So when you, you have to, and, and, and we, have, we are taught here, we, was, we are taught that uh, you don't choose a pastor and the pastor does not choose his members. Did you, are we told that? So, God will raise a shepherd for his people. And God will raise people for his shepherd. Jeremiah 315. So, I, I, I don't know who I called this church. I am very poor in evangelism, I think. I'm very poor. <laughs> I think I'm very poor in evangelism. I have never called anybody to come to this church. Nobody. How did you find yourself here? Whichever way. <laughs> I have never said, come and belong to my... I have never said that. Although it is in our our responsibility to evangelize and to bring people. But when people bring themselves to the man of God, the major responsibility I now have, if I am to connect you to God, I am to teach you what God expects of you. That's why you sit here. That is the major thing. That you also know that you are in the will of God wherever you are. You are not having any question about am I in the will of God? Am I doing the right thing? If you have any question you ask, I answer. In our HBCs, we were here on Tuesday, the other day. People are asking questions. I'm there to answer. Whether that is the place discipleship happens strongly. The Shauriak one, or, or Zion, it's called Zion. The Zion one, when, we go, when I go there, there are enough questions that the other day I just went on, on Thursday just to pick somebody, and uh, there was enough question waiting. <laughs> we answer all these questions so that you are settled in your heart to have understood the will of God, and then you live in line with that word of God. 
So the, that is number one thing that you need a man of God. As long as you're living under that man of God, you know that you're connected to God and then you're living in his will. Number two. Number two reason is uh, so that you understand why you are on earth. Can you understand the exact reason as to why you are on earth here? So that you live for that very purpose for which God has created you. The more you live for the very purpose that God has has created you. The, the more you learn, the more you live. You live for the very purpose after you learn. And what is the purpose of your existence on earth? It is the very purpose for which the church exists. Why does the church exist? It is to evangelize, disciple, and send people to bring more lost soul into the have into the house of God. In other words, the vision of the church becomes the vision of the member of the church. Jesus, when he left, he says, go into all nations of the world and make disciples. What bring relevance to your life as you live in this world is doing what God expects of you. That is what brings relevance to your life. So my work is to help you. Help you, help me, whichever way. <laughs> to evangelize the gospel to, 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 to the people we are in. And make as many disciples of Jesus as possible. As long as you're not involved in the Great Commission, you are useless to God. You're useless. That's what he called us to do. Like this weekend, we are in Logloho. If I'm saying I'm going there, you either pray for me, you send the money, whichever way you want to do it, support. On radio, we are preaching. As long as you are part of this thing, your life is making meaning to God. Number two is another, uh, this is the third reason. You need protection in this world. You need protection in this world. Whatever that, that does not affect your man of God should not affect you. When God raises a man, he gives that man security better than the one of the president. I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail 
against it. Some of you will ask me, why are some pastors dying? I don't know. <laughs> but I know this. As long as the assignment of God is on a man of God, the devil can do nothing to kill him. No sickness can kill that man. No problem in the environment can affect that man. They wanted to kill Jesus after his first preaching. The first preaching he stood on the pulpit. They gave him the book to read. And then he went and read about Messiah. Eh? The spirit of God is upon me to liberate their captives to open the blind eyes, to preach good news to the poor. And then he finished by saying, today, this word is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, they knew that a Messiah is coming, but they didn't know that this man is the Messiah. The Bible says after they left the, the, house, the, the building, they wanted to kill him and they began pushing him down a cliff. A cliff, a ditch. A, a, they wanted to throw him there until he dies. All that were listening to him are the ones that were pushing him into that ditch. Huh? So what did he do? He dissolved in their eyes and he, he went against he, he dissolved, you know, dissolving in one's hand. <laughs> dissolved. <laughs> you know, they, could, they were pushing him the guy is just going through their hands upwards and they are moving downwards. Hmm? They, they, he, like air, he was just passing between them. You can't kill a man of God whose assignment has not come to an end. They tried to kill Peter, Paul so many times. Did they? kill him. He said, should I go or should I remain? Listen, if you have ears. If sickness cannot enter my body, it, can, it should not enter your body. I'm serious. Even if you are a nurse. <laughs> You know, and nurses, I don't know, they, are, they have been told all manner of sicknesses <laughs> that is in this world. <laughs> all manner. I, I think the worst thing that uh, that happened to some of us is when you are taught all, all kind of sicknesses. All the manner of sickness that you are told. So that when you feel pain, you try to guess which one is that. You look for a name. <laughs> <laughs> this can be typhoid. This can, if you are not taught that, in fact, many of us are sick because we were told so many things about sickness. Uh, but in the Bible, you can't find a place. We only heal sickness and disease. Sickness is an opportunity for you to reveal God. I'm not saying it for it to appear in your body, no. If it appears in somebody's body, you lay your hand on them and God is revealed. When God anoints a man, 
he puts him above every danger in the world. Above all dangers. There is no danger for a man of God. There's no danger. No danger for any man of God. That's why when he sends any man of God on earth, he sends to the people that are suffering, have problems. Everywhere you read in the Bible, he's sending people to a place where people have problems. By believing in the man of God, they are protected from the dangers in the land. As long as you are under that man of God, you are protected fully. But number four, you need a man of God because of provision. I want you to listen and listen carefully. If the ministry cannot lack, you should not lack. Even if you want to tell me I don't have a job, it has to be created even now if you understand what I mean. When the work of God begins, it grows. And the work of God cannot grow without money. Is that true? There's nothing you can do without money today. I have been serving God since 2015 I came here. This ministry has not lacked anything that I needed until today. It has never lacked anything. It will never lack anything. I repeat, it will never lack anything. It will not lack. Sometimes people are giving, they stop giving. God will raise another one to continue. <laughs> I have seen people give from 2015 to today. Some stop, God begins with another one. Some people are I reached a place where I told God, I will not look at who is giving. I will only look at who you who is providing. Because some will give and at some point they get tired, they stop, not because of evil. Others stop giving to see whether you will progress. But God will always bring a man to give. The good example is what what happened last month for the this month for the radio. That those who are giving they stopped. God raises another man. This program only went off. That program only for one month and people were screaming. And one man came up. Let us go back to the air. I, I plan any program I want to begin, there's a provision already. When we talked about lunch hour, before we began, it has already been paid for. If the ministry has provision, then people must have provision. This is what I want to say. God, God will meet the needs of this ministry through you. Because I don't do business, you know. As the preaching of the word happens, and you're sitting here to listen, even if you had nothing, listen, in the name of Jesus, even if you have nothing in your pocket, because of this anointing, heaven will open over you so that money will come to you. Listen, 
Listen, by the end of this year, some people's life must change. I want you to listen to me. I am very serious. By the end of this year, <laughs> some people's status of money must change. Must. I don't know where you are. What needs you have? Dan left here. I, Dan, who just brought this kid here. I think you saw him helping us. When Ben Isaac came, he didn't have any camera. In fact, I gave our Lumix to him. He survived with it for around six months. Anytime I have a need, he comes running past and his idea of it. If some of you might remember, Dan was here and I told, I said, may God give this man camera. Who had that one? You're the one who had. I said, this guy, may God give, that is 2022. He has enough camera now. The other day he told me, Pastor, you know, you said it, but I didn't even believe. Now I have enough he told me if I have a brother in Marsabit he told me you are the one <laughs> I will never forget you in my life huh? I said let it come to you we are in lunch hour to transfer money from non-believers to believers. People pray too much and they are diverting every money to their pockets. And believers are suffering. As we are sleeping and thinking about our stomach only, not thinking about God. God wants to raise, listen, this year, money will come to you. But give what belongs to God. This ministry is going to a place where ministries of local call in body where one person can pay so much, whatever they call right now too much money, which is not even money at all. Like for example, on LBFM, I only need 120K to run the whole year. Is it, is it too much for one person to give 120K? For you who is not thinking it is hard, may God bring it to you. <laughs> you are, because I asked and a few of you said it's not hard. I am saying may it come to you. <laughs> so that when the year is beginning, you give. On imperial day, I need 360 K to preach the whole year. Is it hard for one person to pay? Listen, if it was hard before, now we are removing that limitation. And somebody is going to receive that money. Listen, you don't need to just get that one. You're going to get more. But the problem is, will you give? That's a big question I have. Every man of God I read in the Bible, my 
money, say money. <laughs> I want to show you how God spoke about Israelites that they're going to have money 400 years to Abraham before they existed. How they're going to have enough. God spoke to Abraham that my people are going to be so rich. When Abraham was born, he was born in Israel. Abraham was born. Let's read chapter number 15 of the book of Genesis. Let me show you something there. Genesis 15, verse 13. And 14. And he said unto Abraham, Know of assurity that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Abo Agiwan Zedeni, Ubadu. Ilmantante la imben kesat ke summa rake tisetol chani. Hagan ibba huri akta kinargini gargal chani. 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Ani afuri. Amo aningos warti seretan chite. Wallal itin mure gargal chani. I think the Kiborana one put it very well. The Kiborana, the Kiborana says they will come out of Egypt with big wealth. Great wealth. English says they will come out of Egypt with great substance. God is speaking to Abraham about the people that are going to come out of his children that they are going to get great riches. Did it happen? Exodus chapter 20 from verse 34. I want you to look at Exodus. from verse 34. Chapter 12, verse 34. Let me just read from verse 34, 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and the Lord gave the people favor into in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. Every Samate. I think I like that one. Sorry, some of you don't understand what I said. Kiborana version say they they took everything from them that they required. <laughs> Silver and gold. That is substance. You go to chapter 25 of the same book. Let's go there. Chapter 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every that gives it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering. Let's 
And this is the offering which you shall take of them gold, silver, brass, and all those things down there. Before they were even formed in their mother's womb, God has spoken through Abraham. These people are going to be rich. Did he say it? After they left Egypt in chapter number 12, they took from them not only silver and gold, so many other things. They, all the wealth were given to them. God is giving these things to them and some of it is needed for his work. Later he asks if they willingly give. In other words, everybody has enough riches in God. Listen, in divine life, nobody should be poor. <laughs> I repeat, nobody should be poor in this church. Nobody. God has enough for you. Listen. I am saying God has. In, in fact, what you have is too small. The problem is the way your head is small. That's the way the problem is. <laughs> you are small because you have, you have something small because your head is small. I want you to think big. In Marsabit, we proposed to the pastor's fellowship we are going to do a big meeting in town. So they accepted. They said, go ahead. So I'm the person leading the team that are running that thing. So we said, they told us, go and do the budget and come back. And the budget is 900,000. It, it matters who is planning, yeah? <laughs> so we came back and we told them the budget is 900. How are we going to get this money? There was chaos that one hour, chaos. Hmm? Even we have projects in our church. We just go nowhere. Everybody began crying. Hmm? And then the, even the, the chairman said, now what are we going to do? I told him, pastor, that money is there. This, this Moy Girls fundraising happening on 12th of next month. What are we going to do? I told them that money is there. We already have 300,000 from three people. Is it hard? I'm asking, is it hard? People have millions in their account, but they can't give 50,000 to church. You see why God, why God hates rich people? They're rich for themselves, not for the kingdom. The chairman asked the question. As we are seated here, around 30 of us, do you want to tell me there is no one who does not have one million in the account here? There are several there. They are there. 
But that money will do something else, not the work of God. I think last year in August, I wanted to do a meeting there. It didn't went through. But this one is a must. Can you say it is a must? It is a must. I am looking for people that God will pour that money in their life and they bring it. I told them, don't struggle to give. Just agree with me, the meeting will happen. Mimi is a later person. You just agree with me. And pray for me. The money will come. That has to be faith. Now we have how much? Before the end of next month, that money will be here. In fact, we were told Sasa wewe fungua account because ukipelekea watu hiyo pesa nyeo mwenye umetafuta watamisuse. So, so we, we are working how to how to handle that money ourselves. Bes orusu lak beto fi aban. Ogana account ga ne kusini. Can you imagine of all the churches if it is divine life giving that money? Lale ogana sokan chukwe sega hane ta divine life orusu mbas. What does it mean? Mangar kisi somebody is sleeping seriously spiritually. That's what it means. <laughs> somebody is sleeping very seriously. Very seriously. When this man of God spoke at JCC last week, they said, where are we? We missed a lot. After I do this April meeting, I am bringing the man of God, Pastor Lai, here. Pastor Lai is a caliber that you bring with at least one M. So if I'm around 900, now what do you think? The reason as to why my subject is not going anywhere, no preacher is bringing a serious man of God in the town. All of us are thinking in that small cocoon and, uh, and we say we worship a big God. Ah. What One of the reasons as why you must be rich this year is because of funding this work. Can you say there is enough money? There is. God you spoke about the children of Israel with their enough riches before the Can you say the money I have right now is a lie? <laughs> It's a lie. That is a lie. This is a lie. Can you say it's a lie? What is in my pocket and my account is a lie. Uh-uh, that's a lie. It's a lie. I am saying it is a lie. Uh-uh. You just look at that account, you say you are lying to me. <laughs> you look at your pocket, nothing is inside. You are lying. You, no, no, you are lying. <laughs> There is enough that God has in store for us. It's a lie. But the big question I have for you is this. Do you do what God says if money comes to you? One of the things that God expects you to give is tight. Now, I know some people feel pain. Let me speak it. 
is tight. And it's, it's who, who began tight? It's, it's, it's Abraham. He went and fought. Some of us read that scripture this, this past week. So, they, Abraham went and fought four kings that took away what Ab Lord had and he brought back. And after he brought all the stolen goods from all these five kings, Abraham was very rich with all those things. Chapter 14 of the book of Genesis from verse 17 to 20. Abim, uh, Melchizedek came to him. The Bible says a priest of God. This man. In fact, he called him Abraham, the blessed man of man, the blessed man of the Most High. That's what he called him. He gave him tight the Bible. He got, he gave tight. This is how the Bible puts it. Chapter 14 of the book of Genesis. Verse 20. And blessed be the most high God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. The Bible says, sight of all, not sight of some. Not sight of Fulani Anin Dahana Ahe Hol Ab Tunini Mankanke Tati Amale one at in Nahenu Chufa Kudani Kesa Toksi Hena. Verse 20 says, Chapter 28. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat. Abraham 
ngalle na gayan worra tena hi wor tena tena ti na debisi siumachi wa hi wa kita and i will build a house for you fulani fulasuniti amansi jara and i will give all the tithes of everything that i will have amale wan ati na he ni tuba kudan kesa to si henna this avow somebody who has nothing is telling god i am if you are going to bless me if you are going to give me food if you are going to i am going to give you tight has anybody said that to god sometimes back when you had nothing have you ever said God if i get that job one pastor pastor wa chris kruko alikuwa kitochekesha siku nyingine alisema if i get that job i will give you all my salary my first salary i give all to you then he got the job he saw the money he never saw you know around 50000 he hardly get that kind of money then he took all of it out while shaking he went to his pastor then he poured it there and he left that man is a blessed man amen Amen. He never suffered about money from that day until today. The problem with us, we tell God I will do it, but when God blesses you, what happens? Somebody must have heaven's mindset. Do you know why you must finance the things that are in the house of God? ولكنني <تصفيق> <تصفيق> Lastan ado bote la tanda de. Il mana te galakist. Wa katibe to rimbe. Ya rget gar bole wa tak fa sha laifa, tak fa sha kayanja fa. ورري <تصفيق> atin garbeta wala demte boa demte samat nani gara kol nana lala e ene mi injara e azile na hakun ta se azile akol lem ta se tin ke hapel baba henga fa de tikitima Ga 
<laughs> you may not think. But you reach there. The question is, when we went to word explosion, there's something that reach, uh, Apostle Mayanja said. That's what you leave for your children. Even if you give them nothing and you leave and they succeed. You might think you are too young, right? You're not too young. You have to put your house in order. So I am saying. Nani <laughs> Ganhan, <laughs> Yo wagi million to sihen ar kum ib to ko yom sunel member of a two member of the church is tight woni ba ko beta yo ha member hani sa harat betu ni eh eh kara yo ha ar ku dam basa ni let you mention of a of a member of the church member wan hani sa hadu ga ka betu there are some church if you don't give tight they don't bury you I think Mary knows that one. Mary <laughs> No tight. It is like a tax. You tax you are taxed by force by the government. But God will not tax you. God will not ask tight by force. He ah. says willingly. He will give it to you. But he will ask you to give willing. Listen. If you are among the people that want to give to the house of God big time, that kind of person, money will flow into your account. What we are right now doing, especially for the for the count of Marsa, some limitation has to be broken over this land. Dryness spiritually has to leave this land. It has to leave. But it can't work without money. It can't work without money. Somebody has to sacrifice and give. The truth is, there's not nothing like sacrificial giving. Do you know why? <laughs> because God will bring more than you gave. 
It's a matter of time. What it will better? I got Oriba still see him. In fact, it will bring me multiplied, and you realize what you gave the other day is small. You can even increase. When you have got around a big onga, but this will end and it. I have seen it with my very eyes. God lifting people before my eyes. A year get, yani abo age ilumtuzo taka kina mulfes. Nobody who ever supported this ministry remained broke. Nami ministers are willing to abat kabeta kasuma duwayogan atinzir. There must be a change of mindset. One true measure about a man of God, he will make everybody rich. And I thank God for some of you. You have stayed with me for three years, even if your money is money is small. Wait. I have seen you here three years with the small money. Yes, Ergate. I want to see millions come out of you. Million better as a rabbar go for that. This year. Ganhan Kesat. I'm saying which year? Ganhan. Hey. And I talk on Jamaki and Nawata Busayaki. He came to town. When you came here, he came with nothing. This guy here. Just fighting up, got buffet. Yani want to call linga in Dominic. He was doing he kazi ya mkono nyo mnafanya fanya hapa. Jarakaso no jahai. He told me alianza na bibi akasema nataka tuk tuk. Nataka kununua tuki anze. Naitwa je hii. Nataka kununua kwa siku zingine ingine alinunua aliweka hapa ma mitungi karibu ngapi? 200. Kama ujarke mini to call linga kai. Hakuwa na na tank. Tank in kawe. Sasa hakuna tank. Ten thousand liter. Five thousand liter. Now to attack on a gari. I'm on the bus. I got back to my lane. Hey, I know he gives a lot. I'm not coming to buy side. At least I want to see somebody come from nothing to something. Yeah, I don't go for the number that will have it. I want zero by full of zero and umbau. I am serious. Something must happen to us. Why no ta umal? We are not the broke type serving this big God. No better war woman come in kawa good da hana wajan. Just be hard working where you are. Fula jer tut atin jabat. Heaven will open over your life. I want I want onona nataka wale ambao walianza from scratch na mimi na wakakuwa mtu. Siju kama walikuwa binyama before I don't know. But I am serious. Those ones that can say the anointing has lifted me up. People say that wale wa church ni wale ambao ni maskini. Sisi si maskini. The only challenge is when money comes to you, you unai pa church. You are in love. The Chinese are bagatini. Unaona kama wewe ni sasa mdozo wa pasta. Wewe si mdozo wangu. Mimi ndio mdozo wako. Tuboja wagi orisi yenye ati ni mdozi pasta of garta ati mdozi pasta ni tete. You can't be my mdoz. Mudos kita ungande tu. You can't. You can't be my mudos. I am telling you before you get money, you can't. Ada the best in Argadi City mail. Eh, ukipata pesa acha kutoroka church. This is the problem. Yo best Argadi kani sambagatin. I'm looking for faithful men. When God puts money in their hand, they begin supporting the work of God everywhere. I will uke uke fasan fit. Kaya orin ufelebe ta uji wa kawolin abatan. Moses removed the children of Israel out of Egypt with money. Musa ni gumi Israel la Misri esa horiwoli mbas. Read chapter number seventeen of First Samuel verse forty-six going downwards. Samuel ik Arab kutu ani torba kanje di so ajela gab. Seventeen forty-six going downwards. Avuta mija so. When the anointing came on. I think begin from verse 25 as go down was you read really, really so 17 chapter 17 from verse 25 as go down when the anointing came on David and he came and saw a giant mistreating the people of God and he asked the question 
what will be given to the man that will fix this guy the first thing written there is riches anointing has riches when you listen Moses entered Egypt the riches of that city was given to the people of God David rose up in that city the money in that city was transferred to him all you need to transfer money from non-believers to believers is anointing are you hearing me the riches in town has to enter our pocket I, I want you to have that mindset don't see yourself as a hustler I'm just hustling <laughs> I always root to saying I'm hustling I'm a president hustling might be hustled before that some of us are saying, hustle. We are not hustlers. If there is anointing, there is riches. And that riches go to the people that believe in that man that is sent. All over the Bible read, you will see that. God will open your mind. Until you begin looking, getting finances that you never dreamt of. I'm opening your eyes to see the money you have that you're not aware. And some of you are struggling with salary, and I'm always saying, God deliver you from salary. May God deliver you from salary. If somebody can give salary, why not you? And what will the money you are having, what does your money do? Man, what does it do? You are asking a very good question. We are beginning January and we are by December. What is your money doing? what does it do in the house of God does it put uh, at least some teaching on radio and thousands are hearing the word of God Bibi nataka elfu mia na kuendelea. Kumtiba all fedai. I'm serious. Why can't we have believers giving hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred? Na forodu gefat. Nami ufbasi kumtiba ifto kwa. One person comes and says, I am buying a machine at five million that puts a radio in town, Divine Life FM. Things are changing. God wants to lift us up beyond where we thought we are. I know you will tell me, you know, as I easy pastor, she was sour. Amen. Amen. You must dream. You must dream in financing the kingdom of God. When money comes, I pour it there. Don't wait for the conference. Don't wait for the conference. Don't wait for the conference. the Big money. Let him smile. 
And every day he calls me, Pastor, how are you? <laughs> and after he left, money began coming into the account. Amen. Amen. We don't bless the man of God and remain empty. It's, it's a lie. We will get more money. I am praying that some people in this house will catch this. And we are not going to struggle about doing any meeting in this town. If doing a conference like that is costing us 150k, one person can give that. One. 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 This curse must break over Marsabit. Let me tell you, it is a curse to have money in your account you don't give to God. Curse. Curse. It will eat you up when you die. It pains me, I see this all mosque, madrasas everywhere, and the church is struggling. And there has to be a type of people that shall arise out of this house. Great financiers of the work of God. I am looking forward for people will ask me what is the next thing we are doing. Because they will rise out of this place. What is the next project, Pastor? Pastor, project in Like they told, tell Pastor Lai, what is the next project? Somebody is waiting with money. What are we doing next? I'm asking you a question. Can it happen here? Will it happen? In Tati. Will it happen that some people are waiting with money? What next? Nami Abate project in Will it happen? In I want to see who believes. Will it happen? In I have a million there waiting. <laughs> I have 500 here waiting. When Jesus was doing ministry, chapter 8 of the book of Luke, some women were waiting with money right there. Jesus, go and read. It wasn't looking for us to give. That is the way we should do ministry. Not begging stingy believers who don't want to give. Uh -huh. God is richer than you. He can make you more rich. The question is, do you have the heart to give? We are buying a camera better than this at 260,000. We are going to have it this year. Before the end of next month, I want one person to buy. Service in a changa, sasa. In changa, then is safuta elfutano, si juu nani safuta elfutano. Then is kumshia mbaraba. Akuna fundraising. In jitu edi, mchango na kasi. I'm serious. No fundraising. Can you say no fundraising? Mchango ni jitu. Fundraising is demonic. Wea ni mchango ni wambe teohani sheda ni rabai. You have one million, you give two thousand. Million to cap the whom lambas it. Sting. And you can't get it from God. We need to fight this poverty out of the church. We have to break it out of it. Amen. Amen. Now I know I will not finish talking. Let's have just our worship team. And we are going to have. Uh, what is it 